Good morning, friends. Uh, really, it's a, it's a joy to introduce Mr. David Joseph, uh, who, going, who is going to teach skill development to us. Mr. David Joseph, he serves as an online educational specialist with CIM, uh, and also he is coordinating the various online courses offered by CIM. Uh, he is skilled in designing, video editing, multimedia presentation and digital publication. Uh, and also he serves as a resource person and consultant with CIM. Uh, uh, he, his uh, wife, uh, sister uh, Hima, uh, she serves in a mission hospital at a remote place in Assam. So brother is based uh, as a family, he is based at Assam. Uh, well, we are happy to have you here uh, in our midst. Uh, so we welcome you, sir. So we thank you very much for accepting our invitation. So, brother, shall we welcome him? Thank you. Thank you all so much. Uh, it's, uh, it's really a, a privilege and a joy to be, um, you know, taking this session uh, for leaders of uh, BYM. I'm really humbled. So I thank you for uh, this opportunity and um, I'm really blessed to be a part of this. Uh, so just a little bit about myself uh, before I move forward. Uh, my name is Joseph uh, and as uh, Brother Saranan mentioned, I work with CIM uh, in the courses department. And uh, the title given to me as uh, he read is online education specialist, uh, but I'm no way a specialist. Uh, but, uh, you know, I hope to learn and uh, improve in that area. And by God's grace, I have been able to serve uh, CIM for uh, five years now. And I really thank God for um, doing his work uh, through me. And it's a blessing to be his vessel. Uh, so, yes, as uh, Brother Saranan mentioned, I live in a real place in Assam. Uh, my wife works as a neurophysiologist in a mission hospital here called Makunda Hospital. Uh, I'm basically from Tamil Nadu. Uh, but uh, please don't try and talk to me in Tamil because my Tamil is not very good. I can understand, but uh, not very fluent. So uh, though my academic qualification is in accounts and commerce, I did a little bit of CA, chartered accountancy. Uh, I've always loved working with uh, computers, you know, and developing my skills, particularly in, in computer uh, software. So even in CIM, I... Uh, initially joined uh, in 2016, I joined in the publications team. Uh, so I helped a lot of in editing and publishing the books and magazines. Then I moved to the courses department. But even though, uh, you know, one was in publications, one is in courses, I was able to use whatever computer skills I learned uh, from my small to do the work much more efficiently and quickly. And um, it's, it's really helped me to grow and improve my skills and do the work faster. Uh, and uh, even today, I, I keep trying to learn more. Uh, as of now, I'm trying to learn programming uh, to create web applications uh, and other related software which would be helpful in our um, in various mission organizations. Uh, so yes, coming to skill development, the amount of things that we can learn on is uh, infinite, and uh, we've been blessed with so many resources, you know, on our phones and computers to learn all these things. And um, I think uh, it's it's a very bad thing to have your very first impression is not good and i think my first slide itself is showing the wrong time uh i thought my uh, session was going to be in the afternoon and um, I, I just found out that it is it's uh, scheduled for in the morning so kindly apologize hopefully i think there are no more mistakes in the following slides right so uh what are we going to cover today um you know when i was asked to take this session on skill development i wasn't sure uh, what all topics i was going to cover uh, because there are so many skills we can discuss, and I didn't want to focus on something that would not be um, helpful or of interest to you. So that's why I sent you all a Google form, and I thank you all so much for filling in that form. Uh, so based on your responses, I have chosen the topics for today, and uh, we'll focus more on the topics which majority of you were interested in. Um, so before I start sharing what I'm going to cover, uh, let's see a summary of what uh, you have answered to the question, what are some of the skills you want to develop or improve upon? So these were your answers. And uh, so if you see the uh, top most skill in your interest is uh, PowerPoint, then uh, was designing, and then uh, report writing, and then Excel and Google Sheets. Uh, typing and then uh, 
excellent Google Sheets. So um, some of the other skills you have mentioned also were there, like video editing, uh, DTP, uh, animation, Kahoot, Zoom. Um, so based on the majority of what you have asked for, I've chosen some topics. And uh, these, are the sessions, these are the topics I'll be covering today. Uh, we'll be covering on typing. I'll take a small time on typing. Then I'll move to report. Then I'll move to PowerPoint. Then I'll move to uh, Excel or Sheets. Then we'll talk about design. And then um, if time permits, we'll see a few other things. Uh, and if you would like me to share more on any of these areas which I'm covering, uh, we can go through that as well, depending on the availability of time. Uh, now, before I start going into each of these areas, I want to emphasize that uh, you know, at the end of the session, you will not become an expert in any of these things uh, that we are going to talk about because um, just you know, for typing or, or learning designing or PowerPoint or Excel, there are full-fledged courses which uh, you know go on for months together or weeks together just to focus on PowerPoint, just to focus on Excel. So, um, and even after the end of the course, that person who has taken a one-month course on PowerPoint might not be an expert in PowerPoint. So teaching so many things in just uh, two hours is impossible. But my mission for today uh, through my session is to get you excited about each of these things to create in you a desire, you know, more about each of these tools and in that way you'll improve skills. So what my mission is to help you get started uh, with each of these things today. Some of you might already know a few things um, and few features that I'll be talking about these uh, tools or few um, tips to remember when you do your report writing uh, and that will help you to improve even further. Uh, so I'll do my best to provide you with a good base, a good understanding of each of these skills. And uh, I'm sure it will be a blessing for you in your um, ministry. Uh, so just an announcement, please keep a pen or paper next to you, or you can note it down on your computer or your phone. Any questions that I have, any, any questions that you have uh, as I'm covering each topic, just note them down and keep it with you. I will stop in between uh, for a time of question answers in between my session during which you can ask those questions to me. Okay, uh, so let's get started. So first um, thing we're gonna look at is typing. Now out of 38 responses, 20 of you said, 25 of you said that uh, you are already good in typing. So I'm not gonna take too much time on this. Uh, you know, typing personally is something that I actually love, which is very strange for my friends to hear, you know, for me, Typing on the computer is like a hobby, uh, you know? So when some of my friends say that, you know, they have all these notes and it has to be written into the computer and they have to type everything. And they say, I, they say, you know, I don't feel like typing all this. I actually love that. I'll say, I'll type it for you because I actually, in a weird way, I enjoy typing. And um, I, I really thank my dad for that because uh, when we were small, my brother uh, and I, we were encouraged by our dad to, type uh, and um, and since both of us could learn typing in the proper way um, you know uh, at first we didn't use the right finger but then uh, my dad told us to use the right finger for the right key and because of that it has helped both of us in our work uh, to do things much more faster which someone else who is not used to typing would take some time so that term of using your correct finger for the correct key is called touch typing. I think some of you would already uh, know this, you know. So as you see in the picture, touch typing basically means someone who uses the correct finger for the correct keys. So for example, if you see the left hand little finger, it has a red uh, color on the nail, which basically mentions that it has to touch only the red keys on your keyboard. And, um, and as you sort of follow this pattern, it, it'll help you um, increase your speed in time because it becomes a muscle memory. Your finger knows which key to touch automatically. And uh, I encourage you know, everyone to learn touch typing because it can really enhance your work you know, and make you, things, uh, make you do things on the computer much more faster and easier. And uh, also I encourage if you have children, teach them from the start to touch type that is follow this because even now you know almost every job requires you to type and use a computer 
So, um, you know, it's very important to uh, learn typing because uh, I don't know if you'll believe it or not. I haven't written more than 10 words with a pen continuously for at least five years. The last time I used a pen for so long was in my exam uh, long ago. And uh, I've gone for months together without even touching a pen. But morning till night, I'm using my uh, keyboard, uh, you know, typing all day. So because of that, I'm able to work fast. Now, learning touch typing, if you haven't already, it's a little bit difficult and frustrating in the beginning, you know, to type. Uh, it takes time you to go to the right key. You feel like using the key which you're more comfortable with, but it takes time. And um, once you start getting the hang of it, it becomes, you know, pretty fun and interesting. Uh, I won't dwell too much on this skill. I'm almost coming to the end of typing, but the formula that I want to leave you with for touch typing is learn and practice, practice and practice. You know, rather than tell you how to type, which finger to use uh, during the session, um, I, it'll take a long time. So what I'm going to do is I'll leave you with one website. Uh, there are actually many websites uh, to help you with typing, um, but this website I tried recently and I found it very useful. Uh, whether you are a complete beginner to typing or you know a little bit about touch typing and you want to practice and improve, um, there is a, a really good website called uh, typingclub.com. Um, so you can, I'll also be sharing this PPT with you so you can uh, get the link and all these notes as well. Um, so this uh, particular uh, uh, typingclub.com, it's, um, you know, they, they start from the basics. And, you know, so they tell you what the home row is, why the, uh, on your keyboard, if you see the, your F key and your J key will have a small line on them, on your computer keyboard, which has a small bump, which I think many of you would already know um, and why it is there. Uh, and more than teaching you, it is uh, programmed in a way. It will help you practice. It will tell you what your speed is, what your accuracy is, uh, what key to use at what time. And, uh, you know, once you go to the website, as I mentioned, you can start from the beginning, or if you want, you can jump to a more advanced practice lesson, type and see how good your speed and accuracy is. So please do try it out. Uh, you know, perhaps when you want to take a break uh, from your work, or if you have some time on your hands to relax, just open this website, typingclub.com, and see how fast you are uh, with typing and what you can learn. And yeah, as I mentioned, do encourage your children also to learn to touch type. Uh, I'm really grateful to my dad for encouraging me that. And, and because of uh, learning from a childhood, by God's grace, I'm able to type at 120 words per minute, which is a very valuable skill in doing my work. I'm able to do it much more faster. So yes, yeah, so that's more or less about what I want to cover about typing. Please do check out this website, typingclub.com. Uh, and it'll, it's very interesting. It's, they've done it in a very uh, fun way. Okay, so uh, we finished about typing. Now let's move on to report writing. So um, report writing is something that is essential no matter which organization you work in. And uh, as leaders, you will definitely be having to give a lot of reports of the work that has been done. So um, when you start writing a report, uh, what I've learned that the most important thing that you need to ask yourself or that you need to do before writing a report, or I think before you know doing anything, is ask the question, why? Why am I writing this report? Why am I doing this? And uh, it, it's something which is very obvious, it seems, but uh, we don't usually take time to find out the purpose of writing the report. We just write the write something that comes to our mind and then we send it. But um, only when we you know, understand the purpose of a report, what the end goal is, uh, and we keep that in mind, only then the report will be good and it will be more useful. Uh, so the two main reasons usually for writing a report is to keep a record of what happened and to inform others who are not part of the event as to what happened. So it's, uh, it's, it's, 
literally a report. You are keeping a record of some event or some work that has taken place so that uh, you can look at it in future years and also for someone else who is not part of this event to understand what happened. So when you, based because of this uh, reason, when you write a report, you should never share your own opinion or your own thoughts in a report. You need to only present the facts of what happened in an unbiased way. So if you see a, a news reporter or if you see a newspaper article, it's just the facts. What the writer feels about it, um, what the writer thinks it is very rarely there. They usually don't mention it. It is just for the person to know what happened. And uh, another big mistake uh, that I've seen people do when writing reports is uh, they use, you know, I or me. Uh, in a report, you should always use the third person. Um, but some of you, you know, it, there's a doubt. They're like, what if in the report of the event that I'm doing, what if I had actually taken place, I had uh, taken part in that event, and I have mentioned that something I did. Even then, you have to write it in the third person. So for example, uh, if you want to say after the opening prayer, I greeted the audience and welcomed everyone. That is not how you write a report. Even if you are the one writing the report, you have to say, after the opening prayer, Mr. David Joseph of CIM greeted the audience and welcomed everyone. So it's even if it is David Joseph who is writing the report. Uh, so it's very important to keep your report in third person um, so that the person who is reading it the first time, it's not necessary that he should look at who is writing the report. He should know what has happened as a fact. Uh, before I go on to the next slide, uh, can, am I going too fast? Because uh, I've always got uh, you know the complaint that I speak too fast. And uh, I've been married for two years now. And I think for the first six to seven months, my wife would always say, please slow down. I can't understand what you're saying. So can you just let me know if I should slow down a little or is the speed OK? I've got a few thumbs up. Fine. Fine, okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So uh, I'll I'll use um, I'll just give you a sample structure of the report, and this is depending upon your uh, the report or the event that you are covering. Um, the structure might slightly change. Uh, it might vary, but overall, the base structure will have. Um, these points that I'm going to share. So you will start with an introduction. And uh, so, so this section, you know, should provide the reader as to what the reader can expect in the rest of the report. You know, it, it's sort of a brief summary of what the event is all about, when it is held, uh, by whom it was held. So for example, if it's the report of this particular training program, it would say that, um, you know, the report can start with, uh, from 14th to 26th of June, uh, an advanced leadership training was held for the leaders of Blessing Youth Mission. Uh, it was organized by uh, so-and-so and, -so and um, a resource person from various parts of the country. So it doesn't give you all the details, but it sort of tells the reader that this is what I'm going to cover in the rest of the report, sort of an introduction. Instead of just coming and putting it right in the face, all the details, you're sort of introducing it to the uh, reader. So that's how an introduction should begin. Then you move on to the main body. So the main body is, you know, the containing all the details of the event, um, the proceedings of the events. They, on, on day one, uh, so-and-so took the um, session on uh, this particular topic and he covered or spoke about or highlighted on certain points, uh, which you can mention. So this goes into details of the um, of the event or whatever you're reporting on uh, and suppose you need to provide you know a lot of information and it comes to many many paragraphs it's easier and better if you use subheadings or sections you know to group the information for example if we continue with the report on doing for advanced leadership training instead of writing all the days together it will be a little bit confusing it is possible to understand, but it would be even more easier if you have day one, and then what will happen, and then day two, what will happen. So or, um, if it's a, a work that your um, branch has done, 
then work among the tribals, what all has happened, then work among the cities or work among schools, what all has happened, work with churches. So this um, division into subheading is very easy for the person to read it. And it also, um, you know, if it is too much information clogged together, the reader gets a little bit um, tired. But if you keep it in nice short subheadings and sections, uh, it actually becomes a joy to read. And you can, at one glance, you can see what all is going to be covered. Uh, so for example, I want to, as a reader, I want to see primarily what happened on day two. I don't have to read everything because if the section heading is already there, I can just see, okay, day two, and then immediately I can go and read, okay, this is what happened. So try and use subheadings in your main body of your report. It will be very helpful. Another thing, use pictures and graphics to give a visual representation of what is in the report and uh, try and use captions. So for example, if you have an event that took place in a particular church or in a particular school, give a, put a photo of that and mention what is happening in that photo. Uh, because many reports I've seen, they'll have the entire text written. And after the report, there'll be like around five, six photos. Uh, just randomly given without any caption. That is okay. Uh, it helps give an idea that, okay, end of event, this all photos were taken place. But if you put a photo exactly next to a particular section, for so example, I'm talking about the school in one paragraph, put that photo of the school next to that paragraph and give a caption, the school where the session took place. That will be, it will make the uh, report look very attractive and you can easily immediately associate the picture with what you are reading. At least it is, it will become two separate parts. One, it will become a report and then photos. So that will not be nice. So you are merging your photo and your content together to give a full information to the reader. Okay, and also use graphics, so charts. So for example, um, you want to show a ratio of how many men attended, how many women attended, how many children attended. Use a graph for that uh, and give a caption, ratio of um, women to men to children attended the conference or attended the meeting. And uh, that would really make you know, your report more meaningful and interesting to read. Make sure you do not put irrelevant information. And this will cause the reader to lose interest in the report unnecessarily lengthy. So you might feel that this was a very interesting thing that happened in the report, uh, in the event, and you want to put it down. Think if the reader is actually going to be benefited by this. You know, sometimes there are certain information which it won't make a difference uh, whether the person knows or not, or whether it really matters to the event. So if you have any irrelevant information, um, which you think is not going to be of much use or is not important, don't write it down. It might be good to write and make it more lengthy and say that you've done a lot of work, but don't do that because ultimately the reader who's going to read it will find it too much and unnecessary. So stick to only the important points that you want to cover. Okay, so this is more or less about the body. Then we'll move to the conclusion. Now conclusion is quite important uh, because this is where you highlight the purpose of this report. Um, so you've given the introduction, you've given the main body, uh, telling what all happened in the event. So what is the, what do you want to conclude after saying all this? Perhaps, you know, it, it's like saying, we thank God for all these events, or we thank the donors for your support, or we thank the resource persons, or uh, you can also go and talk about the next steps based on what has happened. This is what we plan to do in the uh, next few days. You sort of give an action plan based on the event. The purpose that this event, uh, the purpose of the event, I mean, you know, what, why you wanted this event to happen, or what does it mean uh, that this event is successful. That importance, uh, that meaning should be given importance in your conclusion. So, so that is, this is more or less the structure of a report uh, and try and follow this structure. It might not, some, you know, your main body might differ a little in various reports, uh, but your core structure, uh, try to, um, you know, keep the structure and, and please don't, uh, you know, write introduction, main body in conclusion in your report. Uh, that is in your, your, just your understanding, but divide your paragraphs uh, like that. So I'm almost done with the um, uh, report writing. So I just a few things that you need to remember. 
keep in mind the purpose of the report and whom the leaders readers are going to be as i mentioned in the beginning what is the purpose of the report try and give a meaningful title for your report um you know it should be it should make the reader know that what it is going to be talking about or make the reader interested in reading further write the report as a third person don't use i or me always use so and so uh, welcome the gathering or um don't use any of your opinions or uh, thoughts on what has happened do not use jargon or abbreviations that others might not understand you know uh in in the beginning when i first joined and i mentioned i was in the publications team and uh, i saw an article where it was all written mk 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 and uh, i didn't know what mk was but sir the person who wrote it and the team who wrote it along with them knew that mk is like missionary kid so i uh, you know as a person who's reading for the first time i didn't know what mk is so you should think your reader think of your reader as he doesn't know anything about what is happening i'm completely presenting everything to him so try and use the full form at least in the first time afterwards you can use the abbreviation maybe but at least the first time you use an abbreviation give the full form of it <laughs> do not include irrelevant information stick to only the important necessary details we covered this in the previous slide we also covered to divide your information and use subheadings in your main body based on the content use photos and graphs and charts with captions uh, when possible only if it is relevant don't put any some random photo which doesn't relate much to the uh, report always have a solid introduction and conclusion and finally the your entire report should be neatly formatted and presented this is very important because even if you've written something uh, you know very well your english is very good the content is very nice but if the presentation of the report is not appealing no one will enjoy or no one will want to read further uh, or no one might reach all the way till the end of the report so make sure that the report looks good by ensuring you have used a uniform font uh, you can have different font sizes you know if it's a heading and then subheading and then main content different sizes are fine but otherwise don't put too many different sizes don't use too many colors in your report stick to one color for your text uh, otherwise it will not look as professional as it should and um, as mentioned if you are going to use pictures and charts don't put it all together in one place you know place it in different parts of the report or you know where it will fit best so if you're talking about a particular school the photo of that school next to it not at the end of the report not somewhere else so that they're able to easily uh, understand and it will also look better if you have photos in certain certain places um yeah so that's uh, more or less the points for um report writing that you can remember before i move on to the next um area uh, do you have any questions um on typing and report writing on what i've covered so far i'll i'll uh, leave a few minutes for that you can either use the chat or um unmute and, and ask me your questions or if you want me to repeat something i can do that as well Um, brother there is a question yes sir uh, uh, we are writing a report daily basis not monthly okay. basis we are writing daily basis okay. uh, for that we have you can guide okay uh, sure i also got a question on the chat how to make a graph okay um how long can an ideal report be? okay so uh, if you are writing a daily report um then i think the length it will not be too big uh, so um you because you will not have so many things to cover in a daily report so if you are writing a daily report still uh, you know uh, may i know who this report is going to is it going to outsiders or only inside the organization inside inside okay. only okay so then you don't need to focus so much on the introduction because the introduction is to tell the reader what he is going to expect so uh 
with the report that I was talking about is for a huge event that is most probably going to outside of your organization who don't know anything. But and a daily report is the reader or maybe your um, superior knows what is going to be written in the report. So you don't have to give so much on the um, on the introduction part. You can focus more on the main content. So you have uh, you can use subheadings for that. So if, for example, if you worked on a part, um, uh, work on the day, give a heading for that for the title of the work and what you did during in that related to that work. Or say, for example, um, distributed ration kits. So that is one section, one title, and then write a little bit of what you did in distributing ration kits. Other topic: um, a staff didn't come today, or uh, staff was sick. Have a section for that and write it. It can be just one or two lines. That's okay. But then when you divide it into sections like this, uh, it'll be quickly easy for the reader to see, okay, this is what all happened during the day. And he won't need to spend time reading a full paragraph. It's it's more or less in points. So your daily report need not be um, as lengthy as the report that I mentioned, because it is just for one day and it is for someone who already knows what is going to be expected. So just stick to points uh, for your daily report and you might not need to use uh, photos and graphs. Uh, okay, thank you. I, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, uh, how to make a graph? Um, okay, so uh, I haven't actually covered making a graph in today's session, but we'll be talking about PowerPoint and uh, Excel. So in PowerPoint, I'll be talking, a, I'll have a small section about graphs. So I'll tell you how to make graphs there. Uh, so G. George asks, how long can an ideal report be? Uh, so that, mensh, that uh, depends. Uh, so, for example, um, I'm sorry, your name is coming as Esther, so I don't know what your actual name is. So, uh, the person who asked the question earlier about daily report. Uh, may I know your name, brother? Your name is given as Esther. Uh, Ruben, Ruben. Ruben, okay. So, brother Ruben had asked daily report. So, that length of that report will be um, small. It will not be big. But if you're going to cover an entire event and say, give it to your donors or put it in a newsletter, then it can be a little bit more bigger. Um, it depends on the amount of information that you want to convey. Uh, don't make it too big. Um, even if there are a lot of information, I would suggest you break it into two or three reports if it's going to be very big. But if it's if you're going to cover um, around say uh, 10 to 11 paragraphs, big paragraphs, that would be good for an ideal report size. Um, so each paragraph having around uh, 100 words. So around a uh, thousand words is good. I've seen reports which have 2000 words all in magazines, um, but I will be honest with you, I will start reading, but after 500 words or 600 words, I will go to another page. So try and limit it to around 1200 words or so. Uh, suggest, uh, Brother Sudhakar asked, suggest the typing software for learning. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so that um, I mentioned in the previous uh, slides was typingclub.com. That is actually, uh, it's on your browser, but it sort of works as uh, a software only. So it'll tell you if you're typing correctly, what finger you should use. It's a very good software uh, you can write out, typingclub.com. It's on your internet, brother. Sorry? Software, I need the software without using internet. That's okay. why you are so that it will really be using the internet. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, there was a software called Typing Tutor, uh, which is what I had used long ago. Um, I don't know if this, if it is still available, uh, Typing Tutor. Uh, it, it's available for, it was used to be available for download earlier. Uh, so maybe I'll try and look at it. And if I find a good software, maybe I can send it to uh, Brother Saravanan and he can share it with you for offline use. But for online use, uh, you can use Typing Tutor. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, Arun and Sudha, some say report should be in direct speech. Why should not report be in direct speech? Your guidelines, please. Uh, okay. Um, direct speech and indirect speech, to be honest, uh, I've more than hearing in direct and indirect speech, I've heard always use in passive voice, your report reading. And I also, um, my understanding is you should use in indirect speech uh, because you are conveying something that has already happened uh, to a reader. Usually. Uh, you know, when the person reads, it should be as someone who is um, like not a story where you're telling what is happening or what is going to happen. You're telling what has already happened. And so uh, more than direct and direct speech, use your passive voice rather than active voice and uh, focus more, you know, on, on 
um, telling the events from a third person. And when you use the third person, automatically I feel that indirect speech will come. Um, so I would actually uh, encourage you to use uh, indirect speech over direct speech. Um, so Anand, sir, could you please explain bilingual typing in one page? Uh, Anand, I never used bilingual. Um, can I? Can you explain to me what you mean by bilingual? Uh, do you say? Are you mean to say that uh, as you are typing, it should automatically translate into the other language, or do you want to have two columns? Type in different so same language. page, it's the same page. Uh, one is in English, another is in Tamil, or one is in English, another is in Hindi. Same page. Okay, and you will type both the things together, right? Uh, how do I? Any methods or any uh, this website, you can know better about this bilingual typing. Okay. Um, I I didn't fully understand. Uh, so is the report. Sorry for asking. I'm not very clear about this. So, uh, do you mean to say that as you are typing, you should be able to easily change between English and Tamil or English and Hindi, or are you saying that that page should contain right. both? For for, for example, sir, one line I type in uh, English, and and next line I have to type uh, in okay. uh, Tamil, and next line I have to type type in Hindi. So, is there any website to know better about this typing? Yeah. So, um, sorry, my video was stuck. Sorry. Yeah, so my mother actually, she uh, uses, uh, she translates books from English to Tamil. Uh, so what she used is a software called um, Alagi. I think some of you might have heard of it. Uh, so what happens is um, we type in English and say, suppose the next line she wants to write in Tamil, uh, she just presses F12 on the keyboard. You have to have the software installed. Software is called uh, Alagi, I write it here. Okay. Uh, once that software is installed, you just press F12 on the keyboard and automatically if you start typing, it will come in Tamil. And if you want to go back to English, press F12 again and you'll start typing in English. Uh, so this software is there for Tamil. Uh, I'm sure it's there for Hindi also. I haven't used it, um, but I've used Alki and uh, so that will easily help you jump between uh, English, Tamil and other languages by just pressing F12 on the keyboard. Uh, Brother Saran, reading the stuff and get it typed. Um, please suggest a good software. Okay, do you mean uh, dictation? Like uh, you yeah, want yeah, to yeah. Yes, okay. yes, when we are uh, dictating something. Okay, uh, Microsoft Word actually has this option. Um, if you open Word, on top there's an option called dictate. So uh, all, all new Word, Microsoft Word has that option. Let me just see if it's uh, there on my computer. this is uh, my word document so if you see on the top right there's an option called dictate so i just click on that and i can um, i can start uh, typing or i can start dictating and you can see it is already typing automatically for me yeah so this option is there in microsoft word in, itself in which version that is word word uh, word but, but this is, uh, I think, anywhere after 2016, it should work. 2016. Yeah. Uh, or I think even if you don't have, um, let me just see if it's there in the online version, because now uh, Microsoft and Google has these options for free. Um, if you go to Google Docs, there's an option called Dictate. Or if you go to PowerPoint, oh, sorry, Word Online, um, you can also uh, use uh, this option for free, even if you don't have the latest version. So I'm actually going to talk about online versions of this uh, in my PowerPoint section. Uh, so that time I will I will cover a little bit about that as well. Okay, thank you so much for your questions. It uh, really helps me know that um, yeah you're all active. So thank you. So uh, I'll go to the next section, which is PowerPoint. And the majority of you wanted to learn more about PowerPoint. <clears throat> um, yeah, so it's a uh, PowerPoint is a very useful tool, um, you know, to make your presentation more engaging, uh, and uh, it, it makes it more interesting and makes it more memorable. Uh, more than hearing what you said, we are able to uh, understand by seeing, and we're able to remember what we see. And um, and nowadays, you know, where most of our meetings and our sessions and presentations are all online. If you do not have some sort of a visual aid, 
it's very difficult to keep the attention of everyone unless you're a very good speaker and you know you have so much vibrance and very good and character uh, without a visual aid it's a little bit difficult to keep the attention of everyone so even this particular presentation that i'm telling to you right now is is done with the help of powerpoint <clears throat> So uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is impossible you know, to cover everything in such a short span of time. And PowerPoint has a lot of features. Uh, just for example, Brother Saranen asked about uh, this option for text, uh, speech to text, which was already there in, in Microsoft Word. So there are so many features that come with you know, PowerPoint and Word and all our basic software that we use every day. So for this session, I decided to talk about two uh, important features. Um, and I'll also cover some things to remember, like how I did for report writing, uh, you know, to keep in mind when you create a presentation. So these are the features that we're going to look at. It's uh, just a few, few things, one by one I'll go. So we'll start with the first one, that is design. Okay, so I'll, I'll share my screen. PowerPoint. So I'm just going to open a separate <clears throat> PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. So, uh, so if you're using, um, I think after 2013 or 2016 version of PowerPoint, this is how your page would look. And even if you do not have the latest version of, uh, you know, PowerPoint or Office, um, I'll also tell you, as I mentioned earlier to Brother Saranen, uh, that there is an option to use all this online for free, which Microsoft and Google is giving. Okay. So, um, so when you create a uh, system or to open a blank presentation. So for newer versions on the right side, you can see automatically there are some design ideas. Okay. Uh, based on the content that is available on the screen, it will give you some design ideas. So uh, right now, this is the title layout. I'm just going to change the layout. I'll talk a little bit about layouts after this. Uh, I'm just going to change it to a blank layout here. Okay. So say I want to create a, a collab. Okay. Uh, so I want to add in some pictures. I'm just going to insert, or I'll just uh, share my entire screen. Then... Okay. So I actually already have a few pictures ready. Okay, so I'm just going to make it small. Okay. So let's say I want to have all these pictures. Okay, I want this picture. I'm just dragging and dropping it. I want uh, the Stanley's picture. I want this picture, this picture. This I, I took all this from VYM's website. Yeah, okay. So I put all these pictures one after the other. But now if you see on the right side, it automatically generates a nice option to give a collage. And, uh, you know, most I've seen people use this uh, instead of you know going to a website and designing a collage or putting it in this order, they just put all these pictures one by one after the other on your um, on the PowerPoint, and it automatically gives you various options. Now, say for example, I also want to give a title. So what I did earlier, you so saw, I changed my layout from title layout to blank layout. So I'm going to change it back to title slide here. I'm going to click on layout and click on title slide. Okay, and it's generating some different ideas, and now it gives me an option to give a title with this collage. So I can just write a uh, blessing. And, uh, and uh, right now it's still in PowerPoint mode. So what I can do is I can save it as a picture and I can use it on my, um, I can send it on WhatsApp or I can send it as a mail. Now to save it as a picture, I think some of you might already know this. I'll just share it anyway. So to save it as a picture, go to file, go to save as, and uh, your folder. Um, I'll just take it to my desktop actually. I'll go to desktop and here, save as file. So by default, it will be .pptx PowerPoint presentation. You need to change it to JPEG. Yeah, JPEG, this one here. And uh, click on save. And it will ask you, do you want to save all the slides or only the one that I currently have open? So I'll just say just this one, which is open. And if I go to my desktop, you can see there's a picture done and it is ready to be shared on email or it is ready to be shared on WhatsApp, however you want. 
So, so that's about design ideas. And by default, if you do not see this design ideas on the side here, uh, just click on on top, click on put a design. And on the extreme right, there's something called so click on design ideas, automatically it will start generating for you. Okay. So, so that was about um, design ideas. Okay, so let's see what the next one was. Yeah, so next one was slide master and layouts. Um, so if you see on my top right of every slide, I have this, uh, this, you know, these two logos, Christian Search Management and DYM. Uh, now, there, if you see there on actually all the slides, um, on each and every slide, I have this logo in the exact same place. So what I did, I didn't actually have to put this logo on every slide one by one. I just need to put it in one place and it will automatically show in all the slides. So how do I do that? So I'll just go to a blank presentation again. Okay. I'll just delete the slide for now. Okay, so let's say I want to add the logo to this uh, to this place here. Okay, so usually how we would do is we'll bring our logo. I'm just uh, dragging and dropping the logo folder. Okay, so it is here. I'm making it big like this. Okay, and if I click on another slide, it doesn't come. So to make sure it comes in every slide, I'm going to cut it from here, cut it, and I'm going to go to slide master. Now slide master is in the view tab on top. So you view and go to slide uh, master, click on slide master. And this sort of shows you the various layouts that you can use in your slide. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the first slide and I'm gonna put it here. Sorry, right on top there, the same place, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so we're still in the slide master view. Close the master view by clicking on this. Okay, so now when I create a new slide, that is still there. No matter how many slides I create, it's always going to be there. So, um, so for example, even if you see my slide here, uh, so these two logos, I want to come on every slide. And if you see even this line uh, below, uh, from here with this picture and this line. It is also, I can use it as by making slide master. I can I can draw a shape of a rectangle, put it here, a shape of a rectangle, put it here, and put this picture in slide master. <clears throat> and it would automatically come in every slide. So, so that is slide master, which sort of saves you a lot of work to ensure you don't want, you know, you don't have to put it in every slide. Okay. So then we come to the next, which is backgrounds. Now backgrounds, uh, I think most of you would already know by default, you go to design and you can choose what sort of, uh, you know, style you want. But apart from this, you can also add your own background, uh, which will automatically come in every picture. Uh, oops, opening the okay. So to do that, I'm gonna right click anywhere, blank place on my slide and there's an option called Format Background. Click on Format Background, and I can choose. Do I want a solid fill? Solid fill, then I can choose any color that I want to, okay? But I want to give a picture as my background. So I'm gonna put picture or fill. By default, it will come like this. So now I say, I don't want this. I want to insert my own picture. So I'm gonna click on Insert here. On insert. Uh, it's from a file that I already have saved. I'm gonna click on from a file. Uh, it's in my this folder and okay so this is the background that i want to give so i'm just going to double click on it and it gets filled and this background will come uh by default only one now suppose say you have many slides but you want to add this background to all this so on the bottom right you have this option called apply to all you can apply to all and you see all the backgrounds all the slides get filled with your background yeah, so that's how you create backgrounds. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is a little bit, I'll drink some water. Yeah, I think I'm giving running commentary as I'm drinking water also. Okay, 
Uh, so we saw about backgrounds, we saw about <clears throat> design ideas, slide master. Next is iDropper is a very simple tool, which um, not many people I've seen know about this tool. Okay. Uh, so for example, let's say I have, um, let's say I'm just gonna take this PowerPoints picture. I'm just gonna paste it here. Okay. So let's say I want to call this site as PowerPoint. And uh, now I want to give the exact same color of this orange color on this. So what I'll do is I'll go to my home tab and choose my font color here. I'll try and search for an orange, which matches it closely. But that is a little bit difficult. For example, if this color option is not there, then four colors and then choose it. So eyedropper, what it does is, it goes in the same place. You go to your, there's an option called eyedropper here. You just click on eyedropper, you press the color which you want to give. So I want to give this orange color. So I'm just going to go here, automatically finds out that color and I press it and this becomes that orange color. So you can use that for anything, even if you create a, say, uh, a shape. Okay. And I want it exactly in this color with the shape fill. So I go to shape fill here on top. I choose eyedropper and I want this orange and it becomes orange. So eyedropper is, helps you a lot of time in searching for the correct color you want to match a picture. So usually, you know, when we give a presentation, you want to have matching colors based on picture. So this will really help find the color much more faster. It's called eyedropper, okay? So the next um, one that I'm gonna see is morph transition. So morph transition is what I've actually been doing. So you see this, this is actually two different slides. This is one slide. And the next slide is with the PowerPoint logo on the left side. So this transition helps me to do this automatically bring it in a nice way. Uh, so for example, I, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's have, um, let's I'll add one more picture. Uh, I think put this Eagles picture here. Okay. And I just make this a blank layout. So we'll go to layout here and blank. So all these things go away. Okay, so now in the next, I'm going to uh, create an exact copy of this slide. So I'm just going to right click and click on duplicate. So it'll create the exact same slide. By the way, the shortcut to duplicate a slide is control D. Okay, so I can just press control D and the slide will get duplicated. Now, say I want to move this eagle from this side to this side. I'm just going to move it here to this side. Now, if I uh, play this, this is the first slide, and the second slide, it just, sorry, it just jumps there. Now, to give a nice uh, transition, I'm just going to select the slide where I want that effect to appear. I'm going to go to transitions, and this option called morph, morph transition. Okay, so automatically that is generated. So if I start it again now, and I go to the next slide. it automatically goes there. So this can work with not just pictures. Uh, you put a shape or you put some text, automatically it will uh, move based on um, the first slide and based on the next slide. You just need to change the place, give that morph transition and it should work. Okay. So next is remove background. So um, let's take this, this eagle picture. For uh, many pictures you will have that you want only the main subject of the picture. You don't want this unnecessary, uh, you know, blue background in it. So usually this used to be done by software like Photoshop or um, Affinity Photo or photo editing. Software. But PowerPoint has an inbuilt feature where you can remove the background. So I just go to, I select the picture. I go to picture format. There's an option called remove background. You click on remove background. It automatically detects how the picture is and it should remove the background for me. Yeah. Okay, so it is the pink is what it's going to remove. The color is what is going to continue. So I said, this, this is how I want it. Keep changes. If you see the background is gone, it's just the eagle. So this is a very helpful software because most of the time you get you know, pictures from the internet 
it'll have a white background to it, which will sort of uh, not look nice. So use this remove background feature. You can remove the white background and you can get only the image. Okay. Next, uh, I think I have just five more minutes. I'm almost uh, done with PowerPoint and we'll take a break. Is animations, including dimming and chart. Okay. So animations is, is uh, very simple. So for example, this slide is there and I want it to animate as a fade. So I just go to, I select the picture, I go to animations on top. Let's say I want it to fly in. Okay, fly in. And I can choose from which direction I want it to fly it in, from bottom left or from that. So the advantages of this is, uh, for example, if you see this particular slide, there are so many points all available at once, but I don't want you to see all the points together because it will distract your attention. So I wanted to show only, you know, uh, one by one. So you have design ideas. Then, so my focus is, your focus is only on what I'm talking about. So in that way, animation is really helpful. So you can choose uh, how you want, you know, your, um, uh, sorry, how you want your content to appear. So let's say I'm, I'm just taking the same, uh, text that I use and I'm just pasting it here. So now let's say I want to the dim animation, right? So you see only what I'm focusing on is, is showing. Uh, other, the previous one dimmed. So how do I do that? So same way, I select that, I select it. I go to animations and I'm gonna click on fade. It comes all together. I don't want it to come all together. I want it to come one by one. So I select it. There's an option called, um, sorry. yeah, I go here. Uh, one second. Yeah, there's an option called effect options here. Okay, so I just click on effect options and I say by paragraph. So let's say by paragraph, it'll come one after the other. Now, if I wanted to dim after I finish talking about it, you go to animation pane here on top. By the way, I'm sure this is all recorded later on if you don't remember. Animation pane and right click on that animation. So this is called a text box animation. So this refers to this particular animation that we just did. So right click on that, click on effect options. And there's an option called after animation. So then don't dim. So I say I want to give this color after animation. I just click on that. I click on OK. And if you see, automatically it happens like that. So that's how you do the dim animation. Okay. Uh, I also talked about chart animations. So I'll just quickly create a chart. Uh, someone asked how to create a graph. So I'm in PowerPoint and in Word, it's just the same way you create graphs. So I'm just going to go to insert and I'm going to create a chart. And let's say I just want this chart. Okay, so I'm just going to double click on this. Chart gets created. Okay, so uh, I don't want by default, it gives me these, uh, you know, this um, values. So let's say I don't want values and I need to, uh, let's say, I'm going to change from series one, I'm going to change it to day one. Let's let this be day two, this is day three. And we'll see the ratio of men. So men and women. Okay. And I don't want category three and four. So I'm just going to delete them. So select it and right click it. And uh, let's say on the day one, there were um, 12 men, day two, there were 14 men, day three, there were uh, 11 men. And on day one, there were um, 10 women, day two, 9 women, day three, 12 women. And, uh, yeah, so I don't want this last two. Okay, so, so this uh, chart is ready, but, um, sorry. but when I start it, it just automatically shows the entire chart, but I don't want it to show it like this. I want to talk specifically about each day one by one. So I can use animation again for this as well. So I select that, I go to animations, and let's say I wanted to wipe. This, there's several animations you can try by the way. So I'm just gonna use wipe for now. So it all comes together, but I want to do it day by day. So this again called effect options, and I'll say by series. Okay, so now if you see first, day comes. So if I show it in full day, this is how it looks like. First, only the, sorry, only this thing comes and it's okay, day one. 
men so many women so many day two men so many women so many day three men so many so uh animation really keep the attention of the uh audience rather than showing it all at once it'll read everything and it'll become a little bit difficult so use animations to go one by one okay so i think it's 10 30 so i don't want to keep you away from it uh we've got a few points uh left in powerpoint but um, I think you take your break now and then we'll come get some rest and then we can continue uh, with the remaining parts. Slow. And um, I'll, uh, I, I won't, maybe I might not cover everything that I have planned. Uh, and uh, and it, there is, it's difficult to understand, you know, or follow exactly what I'm doing. Uh, but this is just to tell you that this is all possible in PowerPoint because uh, we might, have PowerPoint, we might use certain, things, but we won't know that these things are actually possible PowerPoint. So I'm telling you this so that you can know that it is possible. You might not fully understand how to get it done. Uh, so then I'll be giving you my phone number and my email ID at the end of this uh, session. So you can always call me and ask me and I'll be very happy to help you. Okay, so we'll come back to PowerPoint. Uh, we finished how to do animations. Um, Next, I'm going to talk about slideshow with personal notes. Now, this is uh, something which I use. In fact, I'm using it even right now. Uh, so, for example, let me open that uh, slide that I. So, let's say I have a lot of points here. Okay. And as I'm speaking to you, I want to have my own personal. I don't want anyone else to see. So, um, for example, let me let me show you another. See, so, um, thank you, Cindy. Yeah, so this is what I can see, okay? So I can see, if you see on the left side is the screen that you are able to see. On the right side, I can see what is going to come. And below that, I have my notes. You see, I, I've sort of written everything down that I want to share with you. So I have this always visible. But for you, you can see only this big part, okay? Which you can basically see only I'll just uh, change this thing. You can see only this. But if you saw what I saw, I have that. I have what is going to come next, and I have my notes below me. So how to get that done? Um, yeah, so I'll just, OK. So you go to View on top, View. Then there's an option called Notes. I'm just clicking on Notes. And below that, there is this option that comes here. This is a small line. Before this, it wasn't there. If I remove notes, this line, nothing is here now below. But if I click on notes, one small thing comes down below. So I can just make it big. I'll just put my mouse here and make it big. And I can write my notes here. I want to talk about. OK, so this is only for me. You will not be able to see it when I share it. So when I share it, for example, it will look, it will look like this. You can only see all this, but then what I can see on my screen is this. Okay. This is very useful, especially even if you're, um, for example, if you're speaking on Zoom, uh, you can either have two options. I have two screens right now. I have one screen here. I have another screen here, which I'm seeing one screen and you can see another screen. There is another option in Zoom where you can share only the portion of the screen. For example, uh, this entire screen, I can choose not to share. There is an option in Zoom. If you click on share screen on Zoom, go to advanced, there is an option called portion of screen. If you click on that, I can choose. I want my audience to see only this square portion. I can choose like that. So that portion of screen will help the viewer see only the slide. I will see my notes and everything else. Okay, and even if you're giving a presentation outside, you will have a projector and you will have a laptop in front of you. So the projector will have the big slide, which what everyone should see, and your laptop, which is in front of you, will have only the this slide, the notes and everything else. Okay, so this is personal notes, and I found it very useful because I cannot uh, speak with notes. Excuse me, brother. Yes. Yeah. Once again, can you go there? Share and show. Can you share okay. that uh, portion of screen and show? Portion of screen. Okay. Option. Thing is, um, I won't be able to share that part because Zoom actually disables 
in zoom windows to be seen so uh, what i can do is i'll just um, i'll stop sharing uh i'll just give an option for everyone to share their screen so now on zoom um uh, can i have any one volunteer to just try this out uh can can anyone just say if you're willing to volunteer something i if anyone volunteers i'll i'll encourage yes, you to okay yeah, brother. so brother joel uh so so can you click on share screen now okay once you click on share screen uh can you just let me know if you click it you're on mute so i can't hear you yes 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 okay so right on top you can see three things basic yeah, advanced basic advanced files. files yeah so click on advanced yes brother now can you see portion of screen yeah portion double click on portion of screen so right now we can see only a it's still loading uh on top is yeah okay so right now we can see only your zoom window we can't see your full thing can you see a green color border around your yes uh, yes brother. yeah try making it big okay drag on the right. side and just make it big yeah so if you see now brother Do uh, joel is actually um changing the size of which portion of the screen we want so in that notes section that i shared with you i can choose that box to show only where i want you all to see so actually brother joel can see his entire screen but he is sharing only limited part of it so in the same way thank you uh, yeah so in this particular screen i can choose to sort of give that box only on this section right only on this this section so you can see only that only the portion of the screen is visible to you but i can see the entire screen so i can have my notes and all that uh, is that clear sir okay okay thank you it's not thank fully you, clear okay okay little bit clear all right okay so yeah um try it out only when you try it out i think you will be able to find out you will be able to understand better by just saying and listening it is very difficult to understand but try it out um that is my only advice to you okay so finally is picture fill uh this is um uh, an interesting uh, thing you can try out so for example uh, i'm just going to delete this graph for now so uh, let's say i want to put a photo okay so i'm just putting a picture here right now now i want to put his photo in a nice circle okay so there is an option where powerpoint itself this option is there uh, in picture format but instead of doing that there is another option say i'll go to insert i'm going to go a shape say i want a different kind of a shape let's say i want a uh, a star okay so i went to insert i went to shape and i clicked on star in a star right now okay so in this i can change the color of the uh, shape so for example is i go to shape and shape fill and i can choose different colors but there is also an option where i can give picture picture fill so i click on picture and i choose the file and his photo will come exactly in the place in the shape of that uh, shape that i put i can also change the shape so i want this a circle right um i'm going to circle here and shape fill picture i choose this photo again and it comes in the shape of that so shape fill is is a nice design thing that you can use especially when you want to have a profile of having it um, you know just as a simple square use a circle and make it more uh, attractive okay so finally uh, is something that i told about earlier online office or google slides so all these things i was using um, the latest version of powerpoint which um, not everyone of us might have uh, so if you don't have that so you don't have powerpoint at all you can go to your browser uh, of course you need to be online for this this going to my website my browser and i'm just searching for uh say powerpoint online and the first option will be that so i just click on that it 
it uh, takes some time to load because it's a little bit uh, big. So it takes some time to load. You have to log into your Hotmail account. If, if you can, if you don't have a Hotmail account, you can create it. Uh, it's absolutely free. And so this is the exact same thing that we have in our offline PowerPoint desktop version online. So I can create a new presentation uh, and your design ideas also will come here. Um, so instead of, and it's absolutely free. And another advantage is uh, you can work on it on this computer. You can go somewhere else, open another computer. And if you log into your account, you can see your PowerPoint in that file also, and you can continue working from there. So you don't have to take it in a pen drive or you don't have to, um, you know, save it every time it automatically gets saved and no matter wherever you open it from if you log into your account all your work will be there ready okay and uh, google also offers the same option it's called google slides you can uh, check that out i'm not going to take so much time on this because uh, you're already running a little late uh, and uh, i want to you know um, move ahead Uh, so um, I'll just give some quick things to remember when you're creating PowerPoints, stick to points. Don't give sentences, just keep points because if sentences, they'll, you know, they'll read the entire screen and they will not focus uh, their attention on what you're speaking. Do not show all the points at once. Use animations um, like how, I was, how I'm doing right now. And use images and charts in your PowerPoint to make it more interesting. And make sure that your photos are clear. If your photos are not very clear, uh, a lot of blur is there, or if it is of low resolution, it won't look so nice. Uh, and try to keep it professional. So don't use you know, too many colors. Uh, earlier, there was this thing called word art, which almost everyone was using word art. And it's, the text would look very fancy and very big. But they would spend so much time on that, and the professionalism would sort of go off. So don't use too many colors. Try to keep it as professional as possible. Make sure the text that you're using is clear. Uh, so that you don't get distracted. Try and use the notes feature, which I showed, you know, so that you can see the personal notes, but others can see only the full slide. And finally, you have to remember that PowerPoint is only a visual aid. You are after all the presentation. So even if you have a very good presentation, if you don't focus on what you're actually saying, it will not be good. So use PowerPoint as only something to help you uh, and make sure that you're, you know, you prayerfully go in and make your presentations wherever you're called. Okay, so I'll be saying that many of you wouldn't have been able to fully follow what I've been doing, but then at least I wanted to demonstrate what is possible in PowerPoint. Uh, and uh, please try it out later. You can, as someone had mentioned, there are many YouTube videos available uh, to learn on PowerPoint and on anything, actually, everything's available on YouTube. Uh, and most of the things I have also learned from YouTube only. So uh, try YouTube. And you can always call me as well. Before I go to the next area, does anyone have any questions? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, I, I'll move ahead then. So um, I've got a question in the chat. How can I avail different styles of slides? Okay, um, there, there is an option in, uh, in PowerPoint. Um, when you click on design, uh, there are many styles. So once you open PowerPoint, I can just see if I can share that again. Yeah. You open PowerPoint and you click on design, and you have your various styles. So you can just choose any particular style that you want and you go. So it's on top, you click on design and you can choose the style that you want. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I'll move ahead because uh, we're already trying a little late. 
Okay, so if you thought PowerPoint was too much for you, then Excel is going to be even more, <laughs> but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. So um, it, it's, it's, it is quite complicated. Uh, and in the beginning, it will take some little time to get used to, but uh, it's, it's very, very powerful. You know, once you start trying out few formulas, um, you know, just to try and see some things, you'll find it very interesting and you will automatically want to learn new formulas. So if you are completely new to Excel, completely new to spreadsheets, uh, whatever I'm going to talk about might be a little bit too difficult to understand. Um, but don't try to understand everything. Just have a look at what I'm doing and see that, know that these things are actually possible with uh, Google Sheets and Excel. Uh, and, and then try it out one by one. So it is impossible if you're completely new to understand what I'm going to say, but I want you to know that this is possible and you can always ask me, I'm giving my phone number and email, I think you can call me anytime and I'll be happy to help you out. And of course uh, there is, um, you know, option to uh, see on YouTube as well. So uh, there is Microsoft Excel and Google also has something. Now I use Google Sheets primarily because it can, you can connect it to Google Forms. So uh, for example, Google Forms is what I actually use to collect the information. I sent a form, I sent a survey to all of you to let me know about your skills in computers. So Google Form helped me to do that. And so what I'm gonna do in this session uh, on Google Sheets is I'm going to uh, first create a form. I'll show you how to create a form. Then I'm going to get some responses. Then I'll connect those responses to Google Sheets. And then I'll use some formulas and to make some, you know, make some quick things. And, uh, and, and, and I'm gonna cover certain particular formulas. So it's gonna be a lot. Uh, I might not cover everything because uh, you don't have much time. Okay, so, but these are the uh, various formula that I'm going to cover. As of now, this will make absolutely no sense to you if you do not know Excel, um, but I'll just quickly show you. Okay, so we'll start by creating a form. Okay. So I'm just opening my browser. I'm going to forms. I'm just going to search online, search online, Google forms. Okay, the first one is Google forms. Go to Google forms. Okay, and I'm going to start a new form. I'm just going to click on blank. Okay, so this is how a form will look by default when you start creating it. Okay, so, so let me just give a title for the form. I'll call it DY sample form. Yeah. And so I'm gonna collect a few uh, details. So for example, the first thing I want to collect is your first name. Okay, so I'm just gonna click on this. I'm going to type in your first name, okay? And I can decide what kind of question it is going to be. I don't want it to be a multiple choice. I want it to be an option where you can type in your name. So I can choose from multiple choice. There are many options. I want to choose short answer, okay? And I want to have another question which gets your last name. To add another question, I'll just click on this plus button here. It says add question and I'll get your last name. Okay. This also should be a short answer. Automatically it changes. Okay. Then uh, I want to get your date of birth. Okay. And I want it to be in the date. Automatically it understood that when I say date of birth, I want a date. So it's changed it to date. Then uh, I want to get the state. Okay. And uh, state, instead of making it uh, someone type it, I want them to choose an option. So uh, I actually have uh, a list um, states in India that I've already got prepared. So I'll just paste it here. Okay. 
So I've already, I have, I copied it from another document. I'm just going to paste it here and I'm going to keep it as a drop down. So drop down is you would have seen when you fill a form, you click on a button and a list of options you can select comes. Okay. So the options that I want to give are all the states. I'm just pasting it here. So all the states, I, I've cop I copied the states. I had the states, I kept it ready. So I've just copied and pasted it here. Okay. And then uh, say that um, I'm collecting all the leaders names and I want to find out how many team members are under this leader. So I put number of team members and I want it to be a number. So I click on short answer and I will click on this option. So I can choose as a response validation that I want that person to enter only a number and that number should be greater than zero. So if the person gives any text or he puts any number less than zero, it will not accept the form. Okay, so the form is more or less ready. I can send it to people. So I'll just give an example. So I'm just going to uh, preview the form. So this is how it will look like to you, which is also how it looked like to you when I sent the form to you. Okay, so let me just uh, enter, enter some details. I'm giving my first name, my last name. I'm just giving a random date. I'm just selecting a date and uh, I'll just give uh, a state. I say I have eight team members with me and I click on submit. Okay, so you're the person who's submitting the forms work is over. Now, if I come to what I created, I can see that there is a response that has come here. Okay, so I can click on response and I can see, okay, this person has submitted David, Joseph, this was a but the state he mentioned was Assam and team numbers is eight. Now this is by default done by Google Forms. Now I want to connect it to Google Sheets. So there is an option here. This is symbol is for Google Sheets. I'm just gonna click on that. I'll create a new sheet. I'll just call it DYM form. And so this is automatically creating a spreadsheet for me. And so this comes in the form of a sheet. Okay, so the moment someone else also submits a form, automatically a new row will be created here with those person's details. Okay, so I'll just show you how that will look like. I'll just submit another response. Let me just put the uh, um, one. I'm giving a random date of birth. I'm choosing Karnataka as the state, and this person has 17 members. I click on submit, and if you see the form, automatically this person also is added. Okay, so I can get a list like this by using form. So uh, instead of um, you know uh, taking so much uh, time one by one to get so many responses, I'm just going to uh, fill some data that I already got earlier, just to sort of show what we can do once we have many responses. Okay, so I'm just pasting it here. Okay, so you've got all these responses. Now, uh, yeah, so now I want to perform some calculations on this. I want to find out, say, how many team members are there in total, or how many people are there only from Tamil Nadu. Instead of calculating one by one, there is a formula which will do all this work for me. Okay, so I just click on, I'm gonna add a new sheet. So I, I'm gonna click on this plus button here because I don't want to do the calculation in this sheet itself. I don't want to touch this because this is coming directly from the forms. I want to keep this safe. So I'm creating a new sheet, okay? And I just call it calculations. Now, what I can do is I can take all this data and put it in the new sheet. So how will I do that? I will select all those columns that I want. I will copy it. I will go to this new sheet and I will paste it here. And it all comes here. But there is one problem. Say, for example, one more person submits the form. Okay, I'm just going to submit one more form. So let's just say Andrew, last name, Michael, date of birth. Uh, I'm just going to give this here from Goa. Team members is nine. Submit. <laughs> okay, so it should be added here. Let's see if it gets added. 
Andrew, Andrew Michael is here. Andrew Michael, Goa, nine. But if I go to the calculations, Andrew Michael is not there. I mean, Andrew Sharma is there, but Andrew Michael is not there. Why? Because this gets updated, but because I copied and pasted, only what I copied at that time is going to be showing here. What I do is I don't want, I won't do it, I won't copy and paste. I will use a formula. Now, this is the first part we're going to talk about that is query. Okay. Now, query, by the way, whenever you want to start a formula in Excel or Google Sheets, you have to start with equal to. Okay. I'm going to click on query. I'm going to type equal to, type in query and open bracket. Now, it will tell me what data do you want. Okay. I'm typing in query. I think it's very small. Let me just uh, make it big. Okay. Okay. I'm typing in query and it's asking me which data do you want. Okay, so I'm going to leave this like this. I'm going to select the data. I'm going to go to my sheet and I say I want this data. Okay, so click on query. So I'll have to type the sheet name, which is from this sheet form responses. One, that is the sheet name. I just basically type what is written here. And uh, to start telling which row from which row I want to put it, I say an exclamation mark and I say from row P1 till F, all the things I want. So I'd say from B1 till F. Oops, sorry. Yeah, okay. Or I can just click on query and I'm just going to select. I want all of this. Okay, till the end. And if I click on enter, it automatically fills everything for me. So query is actually what it does. It is querying this sheet. It is asking this sheet, all that you have in this columns, please put it here. So even if someone submits a form, their new ones will also automatically come here. Okay. So uh, you don't need to worry too much if you don't understand what query is, but just know that this option is there to, uh, instead of copying and pasting, if you want the data to get updated in both the sheets at the same time, you need to use query function. Okay. So uh, now we're going to see our actual function. We're going to see the, I want to calculate how many total number of team members that are there. Okay, let me just uh, give a nice font for this. So it's easy to understand. This is the header. I'll make it bold. I'll give a white font and a black. Okay. So let's say I want to find out the total number of team members. How do I do that? I need to use the sum column. I want to add all these from, from E2, this column E, row number two, till the end. I want to do a sum of all that. So I click on equal to sum open bracket from which row to which row do I want to do the sum from column E to so I'll just type E to all the way to the end of E column. So I can either put this E 1000 or I can just put E. If I put E, it will select the entire column. And if I press close bracket and press enter, it gives me the total number of team members. Okay. Um, so this is if you want to find out the total number of team members. Suppose I want to find out the total number of team members that are only in Tamil Nadu. How do I do that? So I just number of team members only in Tamil Nadu, only in one state. Okay. So I'm just going to write the state's name here, Tamil Nadu. And I'm going to create a, the formula is called sum if. Okay. So equal to sum. It's asking me in which range. So I want the states. If it isn't any of, so I want it to go through all these states. So I'm going to say from D2 to D, which is D column from two till the end. It should be equal to Tamil Nadu. So I'm just clicking on Nadu here. Okay. And if it matches Tamil Nadu, then which column do I need to add? I want this E column to add. Okay. So E2 all the way till E, and I press enter. So many people are there in Tamil Nadu. So many team members are there in Tamil Nadu. 
Now, because of that formula, I can change the state name here. And it will, so for example, how many Assam? Right, Assam? It will change, 41. How many are there in Kerala? It changes, 28. So instead of seeing one by one, I just need to mention the state name here. And because of this formula, sum if, calculate the sum if the state is Kerala, I can easily find out for different states. Okay. Uh, I had actually a few other formulas that I wanted to show you, but uh, since it might be a little bit too uh, difficult to grasp, I'm just going to show you um, two more formulas and then I'll stop. Okay. Uh, so now I want to see, I'm just going to delete this for now. So I have the date of birth here. Okay. But it is going to be difficult for me to find out what their age is. I have to calculate one by one what their age is. So I'm just going to create a separate column here. I'm going to flag, carry, type it as age. And uh, instead of calculating myself one by one, so if they're born in 1983, how many years old they'll be today? It's, it's a little bit, it takes time to do it for everything. So there is a formula to calculate the age also immediately. And before I tell, uh, that is called the date difference. Calculate the date difference between today and this person's birth rate will give me the year. Okay, so before that, I want to show you that there's also a formula to give the date for today. I just type equal to today, open bracket, close bracket. It will give me today's date, 22nd June, 2021. If I open it tomorrow, it will show 23rd June, 2021. So open a day after 24th. So it will find out what day is today and it will give me the calculation. Now uh, I'm going to use difference equal to date diff open bracket, it is asking me what is the start date? The start date is this person's birth date. Okay, comma. End date is today. So I'm just going to use that thing what I used earlier, today. And it's asking me how we want the calculation. Do you want it in years or do you want the person the age in months or do you want it in days? I want it in years. So I'll have to put Y, capital Y. And if I click on enter, it gives me that person's date and all the other all the other persons it's asking, should I autofill it? I click on yes, and everyone else's date comes. And this person alone is zero because I gave it as 2021. But others, all you can see, all the dates are mentioned. Their, their years are mentioned. And if it is uh, you open it next year, automatically this age also will be updated. Uh, so to next year, I see 49 will now be 50. So date diff is something which you can easily do to calculate your age. Okay. Uh, I think I'll stop with Google Sheets here because I have a feeling that it is becoming a little bit too much for you and I don't want to give you a headache in your first morning session itself. So I will stop with Google Sheets for now and uh, I'll open it up for questions uh, on, on Google Sheets or any particular thing that you want to know in Google Sheets and, uh, and then you know we can see how we can go on from there. Brother, can you provide that, that uh, formulas uh, on sheet? How many formulas are there? So maybe we can study ourselves. Yeah, okay. So these are the formulas that I have given. There are so many formulas in Excel uh, and Google Sheets. Like there are above at least 200 to 300 formulas. So it will be difficult for me to give you all the... And also all the formula might not be very useful to you. Only some certain formula be useful to you. So um, as uh, others mentioned, you can check on YouTube uh, to see the formulas that you will be necessary. For example, for accounting, certain formulas can be useful. For just simple calculations like this, certain formula can be useful. So what I would encourage you to do is, as you're working on some data, just see, just think, okay, if this particular information I can get easily, it'll be nice if there is a formula. And then just try searching for that on Google. Is it possible to do this in Google Sheets? It will tell you use this formula. Or if you're having trouble, you can just call me and say, brother, I want to get this particular information immediately. Is it possible to do it with a formula? And I will, I will be able to help you out. So I can't tell you, give you all the formulas because it, it's, it's huge. It's a very big, but uh, I, maybe I'll send you a list of some formula that you uh, try and learn. These, these formulas you can try. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, brother, Joseph, brother. Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah, use the slides and the sheets. No, we need to create another account or already existing account is okay for that. If you have a Gmail account, you can use your existing account. That you don't existing, need to create. 
existing yes. gmail account is enough yes more than enough thank yeah. you thank you and uh, this also is absolutely free and if you uh, work on one computer you go to another computer you log into your gmail all your work will be there ready for you so that is a big advantage you don't have to work on the same computer at all times and you can also see it on your phone anyone else on, on google sheets spreadsheets this yes, in google sheet no suppose now uh, we are using some like facts numbers and all right it's okay but suppose some descriptive information is there whether we can have through google sheet yes yes so for example as you saw uh, i was showing the first name and second name first name and last name so that is not numbers that is text so you can use text you can even use notes uh, like um, uh, for example when i took the form for you i asked you do you have any other information that you any other area that you want to learn so that is text that is not number so that also can come in excel sheets only problem is it's not a problem uh, but you might not be able to do so much work on that as compared to date actual numbers because with numbers only you can do many calculations you yeah. can't do so many calculations with text uh, as since you asked me that question i'll show you one formula that uses text um i'll go back to that thing this concatenate so for example if you see here i have two columns first name and last name okay now say suppose i want uh i'll just delete this column let's say suppose i want it together in one cell i don't want david joseph separate i want it like this david joseph i want it allen john in one cell so instead of writing all one by one there's something called concatenate which joins concatenate basically means joins so i'm just going to type concatenate it automatically suggests that and i'll say i want to join this a2 okay and i want to join b2 i click on enter it automatically joins for me only problem is there is no space in between so i will this formula to add a space in between okay so i just double click to enter it in between this a2 and b2 i want a space so i just open inverted commas click on space close inverted commas b2 press enter it automatically joins it for me and i can do this for everything so i just hold this and i drag it down it makes all the names like that with the formula so you can do certain things with text but uh, it really excels um, when you use numbers any more questions only practice Uh, yes yes actually i i have a uh, things to remember slide also which i haven't showed yet um things to remember is exactly what sir said only one point i have keep trying learning i can't teach you anything on my own i can just say try it out it, it's very interesting um the first time i created a formula and it worked i was so excited and you know you try doing different things so just keep trying and learning and uh, only when you try something you will be able to understand move forward and you'll be able to start applying it in your work yeah okay i think uh, that is uh, enough for our brains on google sheets we'll move to something a little bit more uh, interesting which is designing um how much time do i have 11:27 i have time till 11:45 is that right you can go a little ahead so no problem okay okay so no problem thank you i'll try and finish my lab okay so uh designing um this i'm not going to take much time on designing because there are so many different kinds of software available for designing you know if you are really really interested in in getting into designing and if you have the time um you know and uh, interest to become a detailed designer then you can either go for you know photoshop or affinity photo Uh, i used to use photoshop um for a long time but then i found it is very expensive uh, because photoshop will charge you 7000 every year and i found it too expensive so then i moved to this affinity photo which can do almost everything that photoshop can do uh, so all my flyers and everything i make with affinity photo and it is much cheaper i have to pay rupees 2000 and it's not once a year it is for lifetime so i just have to pay 2000 once and i can use it for however long i want to Whereas Photoshop is actually very popular. It's seven thousand every year. So 
I found Affinity Photo to do everything that Photoshop could do. And uh, so I started using Affinity Photo. And there are other cheaper, uh, completely free. This one over here is called GIMP. This is extremely free, I mean, it's absolutely free. Uh, it's not as powerful as Affinity Photo or Photoshop. So if you're very much interested in designing and you want to um, you know, do designs all day uh, and make it to your work, then you go for Affinity Photo Photoshop. Otherwise, uh, if you're thinking of, you know, um, just starting out, just making simple flyers or designs for your own work, then I would suggest this free website. It's not completely free. It's more or less free. It's called Canva. I don't know how many of you have already heard about it. Now, uh, I personally never used Canva so much because uh, when I first started designing, uh, Canva wasn't available. Uh, this is, it's been just a few years since it came out. So I started directly learning in Photoshop. But I've seen many others, including my wife, she uses Canva. And it's it's a very great place to start. You can't do so many things in Canva as compared to Photoshop or Affinity Photo, but uh, they give you a lot of templates to start with for absolutely free. And you can edit them and customize them on how you want to look. So uh, I'll encourage each of you to try it out after this session, Canva, just to see what all you can do. I'll just give you a quick demonstration now. Uh, don't worry, this is not as uh, brain eating as Google Sheets. It's a little bit more interesting. Um, so I'll just uh, show you Canva. Okay, so I've got Canva. I just searched on Google easy. Canva. And the first option is Canva. You'll need to create an account if you don't have, and creating an account is free on Canva. So this is how Canva's homepage will look like when you when you join. So there are many options that you can choose from, many templates. So I'd say I want to make a poll. And there are so many different templates already available. I can choose what kind of a style that I want to do. Like, uh, if I do some particular styles, don't worry about what is written, what just are. You can change all that. Just look at the layout, the design of it. Okay, so let's say I like this this type of design. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to choose this. Now, don't worry about this. is actually a poster that is made for a lost dog. But uh, I, I don't need to worry about the design of the picture. I'm going to worry about the design, the layout. Okay, I like picture on top, some text, and then some details below. Okay. So, so let's try it out. So um, I don't want this picture. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to delete this. I don't want the picture. I'm going to add my own picture. Okay. On the left side, there's an option called uploads. So I'll go to uploads to upload an image. Now I already have an image ready, which I took yesterday uh, during your seminar. This is actually all of you. So yeah, so this is all of you. So I'm just, I can move it around. I'm going to place it here. Let me just make it a little bit big. Okay. And I can make it slightly big like this. Okay. Uh, I'll just crop the last part. So I just select it. I go to crop here on top. And I just make it slightly big like so much. Okay. So this is cropped. Okay. So my picture is ready. Let's say uh, I call this lesson. I can change this text. Just I'm just selecting it and double clicking it, and I can change it to advanced leadership. Right, and I'll just say uh, today's session was on skill development. Uh, during the session on Google Sheets. You can write any text and just randomly type in something. And I can give the website here. That's www.liononline.org. And just like that, a flyer is ready. You didn't have to do much design. Now, there's one thing which I don't like here. This is given 
the background is has bones which is goes well for a dog but so no i don't want these bones so i'm just going to double click on that i can delete it and it looks blank now so let me just um search for another pattern okay so i can just go to elements here on the left let's say uh, i'm just going to search for pattern any pattern um let's say i like i like this I'm just going to click on that. It comes here. I want to stretch it to the entire screen, so I'm just going to select it and put it all the way back. Okay, and it's right in front. I want to send it a little bit in the back, so I just right click on it and click on Send to Back, and it's done. Okay, and you can also add some few animations to it. Say, for example, I want this picture to move a little bit. Okay, so uh, this. Make it fit properly. I'm going to click on animate, and uh, there are many animations to choose from. I'll just choose this photo flow. Okay, so you can see nicely it moves. So now when I make it big, it automatically moves. The things come properly, and you can download it and you can share it on WhatsApp or anything. So to download, it's very simple. Click here, download. Download as an MP4 video. Just click on download, and you can. It'll the file will be there on your computer. You can share it on email. You can share it on WhatsApp. However you want to. And also say, for example, you did this work, but you don't want. You don't like this particular template. You want to try some other design. So let me just say, I'm clicking on this different design here. It will change everything, and um, automatically, except for the photo, you see all my text comes in the new option. I'm looking template. All the text is still the same. DYM website, today's session, lesson youth mission. So certain things, it will not be perfect, but it is. Uh, it's pretty good. Okay. So so that's about uh, Canva. You can try it out. It's very interesting. It's absolutely free. Your work gets saved automatically. You can download it as a picture, download it as a video. Uh, you can even use it as a presentation. Some people use it as presentations. Um, so it's, it's a very good um, way to start learning, designing. Uh, you can move things around. Um, and I, that is the, it's the perfect way to uh, start learning on designing. Okay. Uh, so any questions on, on Canva? See some of you smiling. I, I'll just uh, leave it for you to try it out later. So finally, we have come to others. Don't worry, this will not take long. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to touch upon uh, a few areas um, which some of you had mentioned in the Google form that you were interested in. Uh, so one was two of you had mentioned that you were interested to know a little bit about DTP, what is desktop publishing. So DTP, this term is actually a very old term, you know, which uh, Many people actually don't use these days. No one says DTP so much uh, because the day uh, when computers were not as powerful as they are today, uh, if you go and show them future that this is how Microsoft Words looks like, they'll think you have a very expensive software and a very expensive computer. You know, because back then computers were this very small, big uh, box which won't have much of graphics, won't have color, it'll just be text. So it was difficult to see uh, how it is going to be printed. You know, there was this something called this WYSIWYG, which basically means what you see is what you get. So in Word or in DTP softwares, the same way it looks on your computer is the exact same way it's going to look when you print it out. So this was not there in earlier computers. So which is why DTP softwares alone are very expensive, which will have this feature of whatever is going to be printed will be exactly how it looks on your computer. So, but now many softwares, even Microsoft Word, uh, even PowerPoint can do that. Uh, but even now there are few softwares um, which focus only on DTP publishing books and publishing magazines called uh, InDesign and CorelDRAW. Um, both of these are paid software. 
uh, but it takes it's a little bit complicated it, it's like photoshop you need a lot of time to learn it and use it so what i'm going to do is for creating books for creating magazines you can still use canva canva also has an option to create books create nice flyers create magazines create brochures and uh, so this video is which i put in the slide if you just click on it it is one person who is carefully explaining how to create a book with canva with pictures and all that so when you see the ppt you can check out this uh, video as well okay so, so that's about uh, ppt another topic some of you are interested in was uh, video editing um there are uh, you know it, it, video editing is, is a huge topic to cover uh, if you think excel is complicated video editing is even more complicated uh, there are so many softwares and mobile apps available uh, which do work very fast um i used to use uh, premiere pro um but it's a little expensive so i use something free called davins you can youtube it and and try to search for tutorials and i'm not going to talk much about video editing because it's it's a huge topic even giving introduction for it is going to take a long time so i'm just encouraging you to try out davinci resolve and uh, check out youtube okay so uh, i've come to the end of my session i'm going to leave it for questions and uh, i'm also giving my contact details any questions about what i've covered or uh, about what you want me to touch about a little bit and uh, then we can close after that or uh, can you also let me know this as a feedback um how did you find the sessions on powerpoint and excel was it uh, was it helpful to sort of give you an exposure or was it uh, uh, too much which something which you might never use um and please be, be free to honest so that uh, next time i'll be able to you know um, accordingly change the way i present so uh, it would really be helpful if you share your thoughts and views very helpful brother thank you thank you uh, um brother thank you it was uh, very helpful uh, i think if we had had some hands on uh, time yeah probably it could have been much better correct correct i think that will require more time uh, a longer time yeah thank you brother it was very much useful thank you thank you ma'am yeah. thank you brother it is uh, creating our interest yeah. Great, great. I really hope you try it out at least one or two things that you saw today. Yeah. We study MS Office. All the subject will cover. Ah, uh, can you repeat that again? We study ah uh, the MS Office. All the subject yeah. cover or not? uh ms office you'll have powerpoint excel doc word doc for documents um you won't have designing but uh, but yes if you do ms office these three things at least then your work will be much more faster and better it is definitely good but it'll take a lot of time uh, to learn one by one uh, but yes if you learn ms of these three products very well uh, then you can do a lot of lot lot of things which is these three tools Okay, thank you. Okay, if uh, there are no further questions, then uh, thank you all once again so much for patiently listening to me. I'm sorry if uh, I went too fast. I really hope it was uh, useful for you. And um, I have my uh, contact details. out while creating a ppt or while creating some excel and you need some help uh feel free to call me i'll uh, try and help you as god leads me thank you thank you all once again yeah is there any book brother actually what you have told no where to go and all no all these things no you have showed there but uh, we may not be able to remember all the things no. so you have to go you have to go here like that and